Hello and welcome back. This will be a continuation from the previous video. As you'll notice that I don't have the same object in my scene that I did from the previous video. I've deleted that and brought in a blob. I like the blob because it's a little more organic and it'll be more interesting to use for this tutorial. So what we're going to do now is go over a, uh, a little bit of this inspector window. So first I'm just going to just shrink this transform down, get it out of our way, and we'll start working our way down. Um, first we're going to look at this outline. So if I were to, it's on none right now, but that's because I don't have the object selected. So for example, if I had changed something, it wouldn't really reflect here. So you have to make sure that you have your object selected. So first I will select the blob. I can do it by clicking on this or of course selecting this. And if for some reason you click here and you cannot select this object, make sure you still have your X and Y going the, the correct way as we discussed in the first tutorial. Because if you were like this, for example, you could click here and you notice I'm, I'm, I'm clicking and double clicking. I'm, I'm, I can't select. I can still select the object this way, but I, I can't select it this way anymore. So if you ever come across that while you're working, double check your camera view. You might have accidentally uh, gotten your X and Y mixed up. So we'll just go back that way and yep, now I can select it again. So first let's discuss this outline. Uh, in this drop down menu you'll notice we have none, loop, and free. So if I click none, you'll notice that I no longer have an outline around my spline. Pretty straightforward. If I choose loop, it will go back to how we had it prior. There will be a thick black line surrounding our object. Now, if you notice, we can we can change this black line as well. All we need to do is click on this colored box and I can choose any color I like. I can also change the alpha transparency, of course, if I want to make an object opa opaque or semi-transparent. I can also use this color picker, for example. If there's a color somewhere in my scene that I like, like maybe this blue in my game window, I can click it and it will change the outline to that color. Now I can, we, we're going to leave free for a moment and just go forward and we'll come back to free when we discuss some things further down this list. So if, we'll remember that free is still there, but we're not going to discuss it right now at this moment. Now, the outline width, pretty straightforward. If I increase this width, for example, I, I'm just clicking now and dragging. You can do this in Unity or you can put in a, a number as well. Just click and I can put in five. Notice that the outline is now much thicker. I'm going to go ahead and make it black just to have it easier to see. So now we have a thicker outline. And our offset, I'm going to leave it this way as well, just so you can see. Notice when I change this offset, it's basically uh, putting a space between the outline and the object itself. Uh, there's many different uses for this. Uh, right now we're not going to cover those, but just so you know that that's there and that's what it does. I'm going to go ahead and set that back to zero. The next thing down is the outline corners. Now, I remember, or if you can remember that I promised in the previous video, how would you be able to make a sharp corner? So what I'll do is I will go back, I'll change this width maybe to one, and I will go ahead and hit N and start making, a, try to make a corner here. I'll zoom, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, grab this just to move my scene, move a little closer. Now, this isn't exact right now. There is a way to make these lines snap. We're not going to be discussing that in this video, but we will later on, so don't worry. But I'm going to make it generally a rough corner here, a rough edge. And you'll notice when I... 
I can like select the camera. You'll notice that this this is almost a 90 degree angle, but this corner is is not really working too well. It's kind of uh, broken in. So to fix this, uh, all we need to do is just go to our outline corner and change it from default to beak. When we do that, it goes and uh, adds this little beak on the end and then from there we're able to adjust and create that nice um, 90 degree angle when we're creating uh, a box or a sharp edge for example. Again this isn't going to be perfect because um, we're going to want to use some type of snapping. Uh, we're not discussing that in this part but we will and then you'll, you'll see how uh, we can make perfect right angles using this beak. Now, going further, we have our gradient. Let me turn this, turn this beak off. No, it doesn't matter, we can leave it on. We'll go to our gradient. So if we go to, actually, what I'm going to need to do is increase the width so you can see this. It's kind of hard to see unless we have a large outline because this is the gradient of our outline not the gradient of the this filled color in here in the center so you're gonna need to make this big for us to be able to see that this gradient exists so once I chose default you'll notice that I now have two colors prior it looked like this and we only had one color but now that I have I go to default. Now I have an option of two colors, so I'll just um, pick two complementary or just two colors maybe on the opposite side of the spectrum just to make it really pop out. So you can have a maybe, maybe, maybe something like this. So you'll notice that you have now a gradient outline, which is actually really nice. Uh, looks Looks nice. And the only difference here in um, between default and this inverse is that it will just flip that gradient for you. So you, if you have something that you've worked on and you really liked it, um, except you'd like to just quickly try out what the, the default is without going and having to pick this blue color into here and this yellow into here, all, the, all you do is choose this inf inverse and you'll notice uh, a lot of this functionality is um, in other vector graphics programs as well so so that is our outline gradient I'm going to go ahead and turn that off just to maybe bring this back down to black just to make things simpler and shrink this further down okay so that is everything we're going to discuss about outline. Now in the next video we're going to uh, work our way down and uh, start talking about fill.